Oh, this is new. <laughs> Having to learn to preach in front of a camera and sitting down. As you know, I rarely stay still when I preach, and so this is definitely a new one for me. Hopefully you received the order of service and have followed it through so far, and all the links to the songs have worked. It's going to take time for us to get used to this, um, but I hope we might be able to start live streaming soon as well. Um, so do keep an eye out for that. You'll notice after the talk there are printed intercessions in the order of service. Uh, these have been prepared by Brendan, so thanks Brendan, because uh, he was due to lead them today. If you're on the intercessors rota and are willing to prepare intercessions in this way, that would be great and we'll be in touch with you when it's your week. Thinking about weeks, what a week it's been. I think it's fair to say this has been one of the longest weeks of my life. It's certainly been the hardest week of my life, uh, at least since I was ordained. Things have escalated so quickly uh, from last Sunday to where we find ourselves now. I've been in isolation since Monday, as I think most of you know, uh, as I started with a cough late Sunday afternoon. Amanda said to me uh, when it first started, it's due to you talking too much on Sunday morning. Well, friends, how I wish she'd been right. I don't know if I've had the virus. Uh, I guess I never will know because of how testing is carried out in this country at the moment. But if it was the virus, uh, I completely understand why the vulnerable and those with underlying health conditions should be practicing social distancing. We had to call 111 on Wednesday afternoon for me as I couldn't breathe very easily. And I know that since that afternoon, Amanda told me she was worried. 111 didn't come back to us because uh, there was over a four hour wait. And to be honest, I don't mind because I soon got over that moment. But, and I'm sure there are people uh, out there who need the support of the NHS far more than me. As you can tell from uh, this video, well, hopefully you can tell, uh, I'm well on the way to recovery. I do need to watch myself now though, that I don't do too much too soon, um, which is a habit that I yeah, will struggle with, I think. But friends, if you fall within the government's definition of vulnerable, if you have underlying health conditions, please stay at home and stay safe. I wouldn't wish what I've been through this week on anybody. And whilst all of that's been happening, uh, you may have noticed there's been a lot going on with the church. Uh, I didn't realise how much I could do through my mobile until this week, all the phone calls, emails and messaging that's happened. I am hoping to look uh, into a way of opening the church for private prayer. As I said in my letter, uh, we will have to make sure that we follow strict guidelines to allow this to happen. But I hope to look into that this coming week with uh, Steve uh, to see how we can do that. Because I think it's important that even though we can't meet together corporately, we can't worship together publicly, we can still worship in the house of God. So I will do everything I can to get that in place as soon as I can. You hit, uh, I promise you that. We may be suspended from worship, our doors may be locked most of the time, but friends, it's not permanent. It is temporary, and we will be back worshipping together as soon as we possibly can. I'm looking into Zoom, and uh, I've now got an account, and I hope that we'll be able to uh, spread that technology out across the church a bit more, so that we can still meet virtually and pray together and worship together. Um, keep watching this space. I didn't know last Sunday when we met that it would be the last time we'd physically meet for so long. But it does give us an opportunity to rethink what it means to be church. It gives us an opportunity to remind ourselves that church isn't just the building, but the church is the people. The church is the people of God. Our doors may be closed for now but the church very much remains open. The church remains open in our homes, in our hearts, and in our acts of service to the community. I know that even whilst practicing social distancing, uh, this is an opportunity for us to grow closer to each other as a church family and to the Lord. But it's also an opportunity to grow closer to our community.
When I woke up yesterday morning, I was thinking about our vision planning and one of our desires was to reconnect with our community. Well, this outbreak gives us that opportunity to reconnect. My heart has been warmed over the last few days with the positive response we've had to the leaflets going out to Bushmead and our combined effort with the hub. My phone's hardly stopped ringing as people have offered their support or they've simply called to say thank you for doing this. Our community is coming together to face these weeks ahead united and I hope and pray that continues. I think I said this last week, but this is the time when we as the church in Bushmead can put our words into action and support our community. So what support can you offer? If you're isolating as you fall into the vulnerable category or have an underlying health condition, you might think there's nothing I can do. Well, friends, there is something you can do. Pray for your street, pray for your neighbour, pray for the town, pray for the nation, pray for the world. Pick up the phone and ring someone for a chat. If you have facilities, meet them virtually over the internet, perhaps both with a cup of coffee and have a virtual coffee. If you're not isolated and can be mobile, who in your street needs help? Which of your neighbours might need something getting from the shop if you're going? Maybe you could go especially for them. All of these things can still be done and they can be done safely. I also want to commend to you the National Call to Prayer, which is happening this evening at 7pm. Will you join me and Amanda in lighting a candle, putting it in your window to represent Jesus as the light of the world and remember that he is the light that the darkness will never put out. The enemy will not prevail in this battle. The battle has already been won. I've tried to follow my own advice this week and to see the positives of being stuck at home. I've read a little and I've rested. I've noticed that despite all the phone calls, all the emails and all the letters that I've had to send, this period of our lives gives us something else. It gives us something valuable that perhaps we often take for granted. It gives us time. I've spoken to my family more in the past week than I have done in the last few months. We've spoken on the phone, we've texted each other almost daily. Most days we've actually had proper conversations on the phone too. This is a time which will allow us to reconnect with our family, perhaps reconnect with our friends. But it also is a time that will allow us to deepen our relationship with the Lord in the coming days and weeks. Can I encourage you to stick with your patterns of study and scripture and prayer? And if you find yourself at a loose end, pray more. Study more, worship more. The reading we had today felt very relevant to me as I read it through. Clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and peace. These are things we can model now as things around us seem so strange. There's still so many reports of people panic buying, yet there is enough food for us all. That's the message we're hearing be kind to one another and don't panic, but be at peace. Last week when I spoke about casting our anxiety on the Lord, I've had to take my own advice on that one this week as well. I'll be honest with you, there have been times this week when I've been fearful. There have been times when I've wondered what on earth is happening around us and when and where is this going to stop. But each time I've caught myself in that mindset, I've paused, I've offered it to the Lord and I felt at peace once again. There will be times in the coming days and weeks when I'm sure I'll feel like that again. Maybe you're feeling fearful or panicked this morning. But when we do, let's stop ourselves. Let's remember to pause and give our fears back to the Lord. Cast our anxieties on him because he cares for us. The reading tells us to bear with one another. Well, friends, that's a lesson for us right now, isn't it? We don't know how everybody's feeling at the moment. Some will show their fear in ways that make us think they're not acting like themselves. Some may be quieter, some may be louder, some may be more abrupt. We'll practice grace, show each other that we care. If you find yourself acting differently and you upset someone, say sorry. I know this last week, whilst being ill and fairly stressed with everything happening, I've overreacted to simple things that I shouldn't have done and I've had to apologise to Amanda. 
But even though that's happened, there's still love which binds us together. And that's the same with the Lord. We may get frustrated with him. We may cry out to him at what is happening. But remember that he loves us. He loves you and he loves me more than we will ever know. As we journey towards the cross and the resurrection, it will feel very different this year. Our Lenten journey will not be what we're used to. But it doesn't mean that the celebration isn't worth as much. Even though we may be isolated in our homes or practicing social distancing when we're out and about, Jesus still died for us on the cross. He still rose from the grave for us, on whether we worship together in our homes or not. And he did all of this because he loves us. So allow the peace of Christ into your hearts. Allow that peace which passes all understanding to come over you. Allow yourself to pause and reflect on what really matters. Make the most of this opportunity of time. I've noticed this last week. Bushmead has got quieter. There are fewer cars on the road. I've heard more of nature. I've sat in my garden and got fresh air and just prayed for my neighbours and prayed for this community, prayed for the shops. We can still worship the Lord in song from our homes too. Hopefully the YouTube links you've received have worked and you've been able to join in with all the other folk from Christchurch in singing the same songs and worshipping together. We can still sing with gratitude in our hearts and we can still worship. Nothing, nothing will stop us from worshipping the Lord. Now is a time which is unprecedented. Now is a time when we have to relearn what it means to be church. But friends, I see this as an incredible opportunity to reach out into our community and to share the love of Jesus with those whom we encounter. Say thank you if you meet someone who's working flat out on the front line. Offer to help someone with their shopping. Pick up the phone and speak to someone. Do all of this with a thankful heart and give God the glory. The battle that we face has already been won. It may not feel like that at the moment, but remember that this battle has already been won by Jesus dying and rising for us. But the battle allows us to look differently at living out our faith. Spend time in the coming week listening to the Lord. See what he wants you to do. What's he calling you to do this week? As I shared after the New Wine Leadership Conference, we were thinking about how little we might feel we have to offer. But that little thing that we offer can make the world of difference. The Lord will take that little thing and use it for his glory. David had a stone. Paul had a song. What have you got that you can offer the Lord in these troubling times? As I conclude today, I want to share some words with you that Chris Pierce sent me during the week, and I have permission to share these. We're becoming the church of new wine, she says, breaking free from traditional wineskins. Things will change. The caterpillar thought that the end of the world had come, but then turned into a beautiful butterfly. This is truly a chrysalis phase. The butterfly times will come. I think that's really true. Weavings will look different once this outbreak is over, once this pandemic is over, when we come back together and worship the Lord corporately in Christ Church, things will look different, but things will be beautiful. And in these coming days and weeks as we worship virtually and in our homes, things will look different, but things will still be beautiful. So friends, May God bless each and every one of you in these strange times. May God bless you in your homes if you're working from home. May God bless you in your travel if you're still commuting into work. I pray the protection of the Lord upon each and every one of us. And remember, if you need anything, reach out and ask for help. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>